All right. So red light therapy. It's one of those things, right? Like you keep hearing about it everywhere. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, it's going to like erase my wrinkles. It's going to make my knee feel better. And I'm always a little like skeptical. Right. So we're doing a deep dive on red light therapy today because I really want to know, like, is this legit? It's a good question. Yeah. It's definitely having a moment. It's very trendy. Um, And it's understandable. Yeah. Because who wouldn't want a non-invasive way to potentially, you know, improve their health? And that's essentially what red light therapy mm. or RLT, as you'll hear it called, claims to do. OK, so break it down for me, because I've heard RLT, I've heard like LLLT, photobiomodulation. What are we actually talking about here? Right. So all those terms, yeah. they basically refer to the same thing, using specific wavelengths of light, usually red and near infrared, to, well, to make changes in your body. Mm. And the key here is it's non-invasive. You're not, you know, going under the knife, no needles. I like that. Just, you know, light. Yeah. Sign me up. No, but seriously, how does shining, like, even a fancy red light, on your skin, how does that actually do anything? Right. So this is where it gets really cool. So those wavelengths of light, they can actually penetrate your skin and reach your cells. And not just any part of your cells, but the mitochondria. Oh, the powerhouses of the cell. Exactly. The energy factories. And what red light therapy seems to do is it gives those mitochondria a boost. It helps them produce more ATP, which is cellular energy. Okay. So more energy. I mean, who couldn't use more energy? But like, how, how does that translate to, say, fewer wrinkles? Because yeah. that's what everybody wants to know. Right. So think of it this way. That extra energy that your cells are getting, it can actually increase collagen production. And collagen, that's like the building block of youthful skin. Keeps it all plump. and Exactly. Keeps it firm, reduces wrinkles. And there are actually studies showing that red light therapy can increase collagen density, improve skin tone, even reduce the appearance of scars. Interesting. So it's not all hype. There's some actual science to back this yeah, up. <laughs> exactly. Okay. But it's not just skin, right? Because mm -hmm. I've heard about red light therapy for pain relief, even athletes using it. Is that legit? Yeah. And this is another area where RLT seems to have a lot of promise. So think about what happens when you have pain, right? Often you have inflammation. Sure. And red light therapy can actually help to reduce that inflammation. Oh. And on top of that, it can improve blood flow to the area. So it's like bringing in the good stuff. Exactly. It's like giving your body's own natural healing process a turbo boost. And that's why you see athletes using it for things like muscle recovery or joint pain. Makes sense. So then could this apply to like chronic pain conditions as well, like someone who's dealing with arthritis, for example. Yeah. And there's definitely been some promising research on that front, yeah. you know, using red light therapy to manage pain for conditions like arthritis, back pain, even neuropathy. Hmm. But, and this is important, everybody's different. Of course. What works for one person might not work for another. Always good to talk to your doctor. Exactly. Okay. So this next one kind of blew my mind when I was doing a little research. I read that red light therapy might even have mental health benefits. That sounds crazy. Yeah, so this is an area where the research is still emerging. But there are studies suggesting that RLT could potentially have a positive impact on mood, anxiety, even symptoms of depression. Hmm. And when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. How so? Well, if you're boosting cellular energy, reducing inflammation, all of that can have an effect on your brain chemistry as well. Oh, that makes sense. It's all connected. It's all connected. So while more research is definitely needed, it's exciting to think about the potential here. It is. Helping people to feel calmer, more focused, just, you know, more like themselves. Absolutely. Okay, so far, red light therapy is sounding pretty amazing, but are there any downsides, anything people should be aware of? Like, what if someone goes a little overboard, thinks, oh, more red light, more benefit? Yeah, well, like with anything, moderation is key, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But overall, red light therapy is generally considered very safe when it's used correctly. Side effects are usually minimal. What kind of side effects are we talking about? The most common one is temporary skin irritation. Yeah. That usually happens if you're using a device incorrectly, maybe too close to the skin or for too long. Okay. Good to know. Um, and it's always a good idea, especially if you have any concerns or any pre-existing conditions, to talk to your doctor first. Always good advice. So it's not like a magic bullet. You're not going to just like shine a light and all your problems are solved. Right. It's not a quick fix. It's about consistency. It's about, you know, incorporating it into a healthy lifestyle. Exactly. It's one piece of the puzzle. I like that.
Well, I got to say, after this deep dive, I'm intrigued. I'm going to be doing a little more research, maybe talk to my doctor, see if it's right for me. Yeah. And I think that's the key takeaway here. There's a lot of potential with red light therapy. Yeah. It could be a really valuable tool for so many different aspects of our health. But like with any health trend, it's about doing your research, talking to your doctor, and figuring out what works best for you. Absolutely. It's really exciting to think about how accessible these kinds of therapies are becoming, though. It is. I mean, just a few years ago, this was something you could only really find in a doctor's office or a fancy spa. Mm -hmm. But now there are all these at-home devices available. And that raises some interesting questions, doesn't it? Like, how do we ensure that people are using these devices safely and effectively? That's a great point. And how do we make sure that this kind of technology is accessible to everyone? It's definitely something to think about as we move forward. All right. Thanks for joining me for this deep dive. I learned a lot. And for everyone listening, keep those questions coming. We'll keep exploring them together.